Welcome to a race analysis video where we are going to break down a breakaway and the do's and don'ts of such things if you want to kick people out or kick pe or keep people in. Yeah, uh, both both sides. <laughs> yes. Cover everything today. <laughs> so you'll see right now on my screen that a rider puts in a really hard attack. And if you want to see the actual context of this race, you can see the full race or this was in the middle of an Omnium. So you can actually check the, all three of those videos out down in the link below. You can check out the, in the description. You'll be able to see those links and see the race where we break down the strategy of the Omnium. But I'm just holding on to this and we're about to start a race winning breakaway. Yep, this is it. So this is us and you can see we catch Pete and boom, there we go. And yeah. this is where you join on to the train. Yeah, I thought that looks like a place I should be. So <laughs> better, <laughs> better make it across. Unfortunately, the people in front of you didn't agree. No, but we just <laughs> left those guys there and uh, came up to play with you guys. So it's worth saying that it was a hard race leading up to this. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it had been surgy, but also very fast. Yeah, someone was off the front the whole race, so the pressure was always on. So that's kind of what broke everybody. We're 17 minutes into the race, and mm -hmm. that's why this worked so well. It's starting to hurt really bad. And this poll you just did, I mean, I did a hard move to hold on to this one. Mm -hmm. Jose did a hard one to start it. The other rider we're with in the orange helmet. And you did a really hard move there, too. Yeah. Uh, so we're all, it's not like anyone's really fresh. We're probably evenly cooked. Yeah, we're start, of starting off hard, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then we're going from there. Uh, so right off the bat, a, a good thing that just happened for you and bad thing for me is uh, <laughs> you let me go on Jose's wheel. And uh, Jose is, uh, he might be eight inches shorter than me <laughs> and uh, probably 80 pounds less. Yes. Uh, he cuts a much smaller hole. Yeah, he cuts a much smaller hole. Yes. So you decide you'd rather sit on my wheel than Jose's wheel. <laughs> and I, I thought I'd better let John sit on my wheel instead of Jose's wheel. Because we were racing, actually, you were racing for me in this one. Yeah. Thank you for that, Yeah, of Pete. course. So, yeah, and that basically meant that you didn't really get much of a break. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this course is, is tricky because you have to hold the speed really high, um, and you're kind of forced to slow down twice. Mm -hmm. um, and so the other way to think about this is that means you have to accelerate twice. Mm -hmm. And so we want me to be doing at least one of those, and hopefully the other person but in this in this scenario you're taking the headwind stretch so that yep. we're we're increasing our gap over the field because we also care about winning yeah <laughs> one of the rules in a breakaway and we mentioned this in in the video where we talked about the gc but a lot of the time you think that you have because in your mind you kind of have this like fear response of getting chased down yeah so you constantly feel like you have to go faster than you're currently going. Yep. However, with a breakaway, you just have to remember once you get a gap, you just have to ride at the same pace that that field was riding at. Yeah. And it's much harder to ride faster than a field. To ride the same speed as a field is not that bad. It right? really isn't. Yeah. And sure, they may attack and everything else, and they may bring you back. That's yeah. okay. Uh, but if you keep the same speed, then they're probably not going to be able to bring you back. So it's kind of a good rule of thumb is you kind of have a speed figured out roughly for what people are going at. And that's what you kind of want to maintain. And hopefully that's within your abilities in terms of power. Yeah. And, and that's really it, it comes down to um, establishing the gap is the hard part. And then holding the gap is much easier. So work really hard to establish the gap. And then you hold on to what you earned earlier. Yes. Yeah. So you can see that I'm doing this is a, a really weird course with wind. It, it when you round the turn that we just went through, it hits you everywhere. It doesn't like mm -hmm. I don't know how, but it, it like it's hard to hide from it. I yeah. think it swirls in that direction. So no matter how you're drafting, it just kind of hurts. Yeah, we the joke is that it's always a cross headwind on this course, no matter where you are. <laughs> um, there's a huge airport to our left, so there's nothing blocking the wind on that straight we just finished. Um, but that means you're fighting the wind that whole straight and then on the in this turn is the only spot where you had a tailwind and it was very short <laughs> and then after that <laughs> right nice here though, right? Yeah, right here you were back to a crosswind yep. and it would cut through the buildings and stuff and hit you and just kind of swirl around so that's kind of the wind scenario and you'll see that jose pulls through that tail like to kind of the latter end of that crosswind and tailwind section then you're pulling through this cross windy mm -hmm. section uh, which is probably the better spot for you to pull yeah kind of kind of um 
since I can hold higher speeds than Jose, not you necessarily, but definitely Jose, um, it's kind of up to me to like increase the speed for these long straights. And that's definitely what I'm good at. I, I'm not that great at accelerating, but once we're already going fast, I can definitely hold it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like handing off an easy pull, easier pull yes. to whoever is coming through because we're already going 28 um, yes. and you don't have to do any accelerating. You started us off at 26 there. And then we go into this section and every time I notice the group was dropping out of like 23 here. So you can see that I end up putting down some pretty heavy wattage through this area as I'm fighting the wind, <laughs> but I'm just trying to stay above 25, 26, because yeah. I know that if we do that, we're gonna be extending our gap. Yeah, and the, the field definitely slows down there every time. It's so painful and, and making that shorter and harder, uh, it's rough on us, but I bet we gained a second or two every single lap just yeah. in five seconds. I'm sure. Yeah. So that was kind of the goal. And then I would fall in and you can see that it's, I get a pretty, good rest but you don't really get much of a rest <laughs> yeah uh jose's just doesn't my like thighs get a super good draft <laughs> and then um but yeah we were looking at the watching this race back um it's almost the same amount of work for me to be pulling as for me to be sitting on jose's wheel mm -hmm. um not that's i'm exaggerating but right. it, it definitely is noticeable and um also dealing with these couple accelerations it's just the, there's a lot of wind, there's a lot of pressure, and then John accelerating through the headwind. Uh, it was it made for a lot. Yeah, and um, also not giving you're not getting a great draft in that headwind either because yeah. once again the wind is swirling around. Yeah. So this is like let's get into this scenario where we basically talk about if you wanted to get rid of somebody in a breakaway, you should probably do what I'm doing to you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you could if you could do what John's doing to a T, it'd be perfect. <laughs> so position the bigger rider. Uh, behind the small rider. Yep. So then they're basically doing one and a half pulls for every three pulls, mm -hmm. whereas I'm only doing one for every three. Yep. And one other thing to think about is the surgier the rider, the worse they are to be behind. And I would definitely call Jose a surgier rider. He, mm -hmm. he has a little more kick. Um, and even in his pulls, they fluctuate yeah. pretty wildly. And so you have to deal, it's not much, but it's like... 50 extra watts here, 50 extra watts there, and it definitely wears on you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can position kind of behind the diesel rider, uh, hopefully tall and big <laughs> and diesel yeah. that's the dream. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's the perfect spot to be. Yeah. So picking your position in the group really matters, and the way you get there is, I mean, there's unlimited ways. Take a drink, uh, blow your nose, mm -hmm. uh, say, hold on a second. Tighten look, a shoe. Tighten a shoe. Look back. Say, I'm going to I'm gonna check the gap. Adjust uh, your kit. Yeah, there's anything. <laughs> anything. Pull out some food and then put it back in your pocket. Yeah. Even sometimes move ahead and take a pull for mm -hmm. somebody a little early and just yep. be like, don't worry, I got this one. Yep. And you're doing them, and I'm doing this in quotes, a favor. Exactly. But you're also doing yourself a favor. <laughs> exactly. And that's kind of one of the things we worked out a really good way. Now that you're in the right spot in the group, now you want to be taking your pulls on the right spot on the course. Uh-huh. Right? Yep. You get it figured out. <laughs> Out on yeah. a lapped course. Yeah. So Now's if you're doing, time. yeah, this is this is great. So um, Jose gets the tailwind, which is fine because he's getting the least amount of benefit mm -hmm. from that tailwind. Yep. Um, and then we get to take this harder stretch, or I get to take the harder stretch and make it hard on him again. Yes. Which is what uh, you're getting the easy ride, and I'm speeding us up along the straight, and then we go straight into the hard section. <laughs> where you can capitalize on all the work we've done for the last 40 seconds yep and give us like a nice hammer blow yes <laughs> so this is the other thing if i wanted to get rid of somebody i would position myself so that they were behind they had just done a pull before mm -hmm. we get into the hardest section yep for sure and and that's what happens here and i'm not trying to get rid of pete I'm just trying to extend our gap, and I'm in my mind, I'm like, Pete's Superman. He's strong. He'll be fine. <laughs> He'll make it. <laughs> but, you know, a death by a thousand yeah. cuts, what they say, right? Right yeah. there, you had to do over 500 watts coming out of that turn. Yeah, just to stay in. <laughs> just to stay in. And then, once again, you're up 400 watts coming through here. And I'm also up pretty high. And you can see, like, the differential actually isn't that big between our wattage mm -hmm. uh, because you're just not getting that great of a draft through here. Yeah, and that's what's interesting is that's harder than my pull was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> so you just did your pull, then you yeah. do something harder, yep. and then you sit in behind a rider that hardly gives you a draft, and then it's your turn again. Exactly. So this is the spot where you want to put some. If you don't want them in your group, you want to put them there, and then if you find yourself in that position, you want to reshuffle the deck. Yeah, get out of there. Yes, um, and you can do it by either taking a yeah, take a short pull, swap out. Like if you find yourself 
um, getting stretched in a breakaway, you'll be able to know really quickly and start changing the scenario that you're in because that's going to cause a problem over the next five or 10 minutes for sure. So if this was difficult, Pete, like for you and we were like in a teammate scenario, kind of like we were here, <laughs> would you like tell me like, Hey, we need to change the order or would you, how would you communicate it? Or would you just do it? Probably just do it. Um, you can kind of tell if someone, uh, but from both perspectives, if someone deviates out of their rotation, usually they're trying to change something, um, unless they're they're not aware that there's a problem. Um, right. But most most experienced riders try to change the scenario to suit them better. Mm -hmm. um, and this is you can also m notice when people's poles start really tapering off, um, especially in a if everybody's pulling the same and we've been pulling the same for ten minutes, unless they're really fresh and they're going to attack. Um, they're still trying, right? Like we were trying mm -hmm. hard this whole time and my poles were definitely f falling. I yeah. remember you saying like, come on, we got this or something. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, John, I know we do. <laughs> by we, I mean you got this. <laughs> right, exactly. That's a good way to look at it. The indications from body language, from the, the, the difficulty of their poles, everything else. Uh, should we fast forward to a point? It's actually not too far ahead in the video, so you can watch the full video of, of this race, and it'll be linked mm -hmm. below. Um, but I think we should uh, fast forward to a point where you actually attack. Yeah. And this is an interesting choice, because we'll talk about attacking a breakaway. And actually, we can probably just play through from here, because yeah, it's coming see. up. It's, it should be just about right here. Yeah, so we've been in the break for a bit. Everyone's getting tired. All yep. three of us are tired. And you want to get rid of the other rider, right? And mm -hmm. and since you're racing for me and you want to deliver me. Yep. And so what's, what, what brought you to this decision? Well, and honestly, if Jose wasn't in the group, my race would be easier. <laughs> yes. If it was just you and I, I would have a better chance of making it to the end of the breakaway. We might even go faster. Yeah. So what I think is he's been pulling pretty hard and he's been taking longer pulls because we've I've been taking shorter pulls pretty much. He's making up the difference. Yep. And it's a preem lap, so there's some points. And um, I was kind of hoping I could catch him off guard. And I did a little bit, and he had to actually full on sprint to get back onto us. Hard move. Hard move. <laughs> and I was already kind of on the ropes. And so this was, for me, it's like a Hail Mary. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Hope it works. Yeah, if I get rid of Jose, I get to stay in the rest of the race. If he comes back, then my job is to get back on his wheel again and start sucking it up. I think it was a good move. It's just Jose was so strong. He was pretty strong. It was really impressive that he could sprint back on yep. after doing that hard pull. Yep. And now and and then I make him shut it down. You gotta Smart. Try, you got to try everything. Smart, yeah. <laughs> like you sitting down yeah. and then me just kind of dangling off the front. So now he's having to do the hard work. But uh, unfortunately, it's still hard for me. Um, and at this point, I'm thinking, I've pulled through this turn really hard every lap. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but, I sit back up. Yeah, and it, it's you kind of have to take your advantages when they come. And a preem lap is a good time where sometimes you just go to pedal hard and there's just nothing in your legs, right? Like yep. it, it happens to us, to us all. And so the chances of that happening are probably pretty slim. But I can roll up those like 6 and 7 watt efforts way better than I can do a 1,000 watts. So mm -hmm. um, I probably... I knew we were two thirds of the way through the race. Uh, the break, it seemed like we had 40 seconds. So if you guys lost me, it wasn't going to be game over for you. Right. And you can see our speed drop here to around 23 because of that hard move. Uh, mm -hmm. I assume that the pack did the same thing. They probably sprinted for the preem, but yep. I bet they dropped a little lower than us. Yeah. So sure. once again, like at this point, I'm already thinking I rolled to the front and I actually put in like a kind of like a, this isn't my normal spot for a rotation. Mm -hmm. But I rolled to the front and I wanted to keep the pace high because I thought, hey, if they did a preem and then people launched, they yep. might be able to get some ground on us. So. And, and that's a really important thing is if you, you're kind of in control of the breakaway, um, you get to dictate the pace and you'll know when, if you're aware enough that the pace is slowing down in your breakaway, it's kind of up to you to inject some pace when it's necessary. Right. And so you had to pull something back of that couple seconds we possibly lost mm -hmm. um, and just get like get everything spinning again, get the rotation going. Yep. And um, as a, in a breakaway, there should be one person who's really taking control and like kind of dictating the way things are. Yeah. Yeah, it really does help. Oh, Otherwise, amazing. it ends up falling apart. And and many times it just naturally happens. Mm -hmm. Usually it does. Yep. In this case, I, I since I had the overall motive and everything else, mm -hmm. I I assumed that role, right? Yeah. 
uh, and it ended up working out the best for Jose and I in this case if we stuck together and worked together because he got maximum points and then I, I got the win. Yeah. So it ended up working out pretty well. Uh, so Pete, after that move, you were in. You were like five and a half feet into a six foot grave. Yeah, I was pretty <laughs> pretty far down. I think you were giving me encouragement, and um, I remember thinking, I probably have like the number of laps I have is one or two. Yeah, not, <laughs> that's all you got. Not, left. not five or you know something like that. But uh, looking through this course, you can see the break or see the see how far we have on the field mm -hmm. and you guys are moving fast and they're the break or the pack behind us is splintering yeah we're not really worried about them catching us anymore and as long as you're sitting on him technically you're getting what you're after and i figured if we kept the pace high and he cracked then that's fine mm -hmm. um, it was within my my abilities but then if we kept the pace high we came across together it was also great yeah but pace high was the consistent thing and the thing that we wanted to keep throughout this whole thing so uh, coming up soon here, you're going to come detached. Yep. Uh, if you were coming detached from a group or from a breakaway like this, is this the sort of thing where you would say, hey, guys, like, can we adjust strategy or anything else like that, Keep, pack it or knock it down a notch, or why didn't you in this case? Yeah, and so probably if I really wanted to stay, I, I wasn't worried about you, which is <laughs> why I didn't, <laughs> right. didn't. I thought I can just throw up the white flag and, and drop out. Um, if I really was in this scenario, probably uh, two laps before this, I would have not skipped a pull, but you really shorten your pulls. Um, it's way more disruptive to a group to skip your pull than to just take a five second pull. Mm -hmm. And so if you start metering your pulls um, and then really, uh, especially on this course, if you find yourself really close to everybody's wheel, you focus on like the efficiency part of it. Mm -hmm. um, a couple laps of paying attention to being efficient and short pulls, you'll feel much better. So I would have done that instead of uh, keep drilling it uh, yeah. as, as long as I could. But um, it's a death, we, we talk about all the time, it's a death by a thousand cuts. You know, it's everything you're doing for five minutes or 10 minutes, which will lead you to where you are. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention. And I probably would have swapped out of behind Jose a couple times, just here and there. One, one pull might have made the difference, but as you can see, I'm getting detached yeah. while you guys are talking to each other. Yes. So. <laughs> this is what we're, he was asking me right now. He's like, is Pete really falling off? I'm like, yes, I think he is. <laughs> and this is where it kind of all, all went sideways uh, and, and you ended up coming off there. But at the same time, like you said, job accomplished in terms of what you needed to do. Jose went to the front because I bet Jose was thinking like, hey, man, Pete attacked me a little while ago. I'm gonna, I don't want him to stick on. Right? Yeah, and, and all he has to do is keep the pressure on. If I'm yeah. actually hurting, I'll... It, it's a good way to tell whether someone's actually hurting because if you put a little extra pressure when someone's either faking it they'll stay on just fine yeah or if they're hurt like like this i just disappear and if they do an attack a lot of the time you can kind of fake a short attack you get a little bit of those basically you know, creatine phosphate those yeah. anaerobic that anaerobic contribution for just a short little bit mm -hmm. you can kind of fake holding on to an attack yep. and that you're still okay but if the pace just stays high the whole time it mm -hmm. just that, that's when the cracks really start to develop yeah and so if you want to get rid of somebody uh, sometimes the best way isn't just to attack it's just to death by a thousand cuts yeah and, and that attack it almost is always followed by a lull and that's going to benefit the tired rider more than the fresh rider so mm -hmm. think of a pressure rather than attacks right if the current pattern is hurting the rider mm -hmm. don't stop the current pattern exactly keep it going yep Cool. Is there anything else that you would add on this, I guess, Pete, for attacks or no, for breakaways? Forgive I mean, me? you did a good job. I think um, it's kind of uh, every every breakaway is so different, but mm -hmm. there are a couple moves, right? There's a couple things you can do is like be efficient, pay attention to everybody else, and like really find where you're supposed to be in the pack and on the course. Like if you can do those two things, it, it it's applicable every single crit or every single lapped race man, your life is so much easier. It is. And the only other thing I'd add to that is remember the rule of getting the break and then after you get the break, it's really about maintaining the break. Yep. Uh, don't, don't freak yourself out and think you need to be the fastest person in the world every second of the break. That's right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into this one. For more information on this, you can head over to forum.trainerroad.com. We'll have a forum post for this one. We can talk all about breakaways in there with all the different other people that have watched this. You can also head into the description below and find the links to the full race video and the analysis we did of the Omnium with this video included. And you can also go down there and chat with other folks that have seen this video and ask some questions. Yeah, it's going to be lots of fun. Of course. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Hey, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Pete. 
And if you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel because there's a lot more where that came from. And you can give it a thumbs up. Yeah, if there's something you didn't like, give it a thumbs down. And if you would have done something differently, uh, let us know in the comments below. Absolutely. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, you should head over to trainerroad.com. It works. That's how Pete's fast. Yeah, 100%. <laughs>